<laughs> I will come to the next millionaire as easy as it that. Make sure you don't miss out on this opportunity. Good evening, tele viewers. You're welcome to this other edition of uh, Prime R on My Media Prime. First, uh, for the week, we this day are going to be looking at uh, the situation, uh, asking uh, why the indefinite uh, lockdown in whose interest and uh, in whose uh, name uh, this uh, uh, who is calling for the ghost town are the people actually endorsing it or they are caught between the deep uh, blue sea and uh, the fire we are also going to be looking at uh, the visit uh, to cameroon of the secretary of state uh, for the vatican who was received by cameroon's prime minister uh, cameroon's head of state yesterday he was in bermenda and is still in cameroon we are going to be looking at uh, the reasons for his uh, coming to cameroon and the possibilities for him to turn things around when it comes to the anglophone uh, problem we also tomorrow are still going to be talking about his visit in cameroon from a different perspective we are discussing this with our panelists who already are seated in the house uh, uh, fabrice lena is in the house he is the secretary general of uh, the pap party though he is now wearing another <laughs> cap uh, very soon, we are going to discover him more in that under that uh, canopy. Good evening and welcome, all the way from Yaoundé. Thank you, Celio, for having me as your guest. I want to greet the viewers of Prime Hour program on my media, Prime TV, and to greet all the uh, uh, all the militants of Popular Action Party and uh, to our people who are suffering in the northwest and southwest because of indefinite lockdown. That courage is not easy, but we are going to overcome. Thank you once more for, well, uh, for having me here, and uh, I want to say a special good evening to my co-panelists who, with whom we are going to share the plateau this evening. Also with us uh, for the very first time is Mr. Mungwa Marinus. He is uh, an expert um, transport uh, expert <coughs> offshore. Maritime. Offshore. Maritime, ma offshore maritime offshore. Uh, ex expert and uh, also uh, a militant uh, with the ruling CPDM party. He is uh, actually a... Municipal Councillor for the Tuba, Tuba Council, Mesam, Mesam that is five. Mesam 5. Uh, we are glad to have you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Kuhn. It's my pleasure being on your platform here. I've uh, always been a keen watcher and uh, supporter of my prime uh, media TV. And uh, due to time constraint, I've been unable to make it up with you people and uh, actually said so this time let me squeeze off some time uh, to make it and uh, share contributions with our televiewers uh, within national and uh, beyond our country regarding the crisis which is actually uh, depriving the economic growth of our country. <laughs> we glad to have you. Also with us is uh, Tamai Javis. Uh, Ta, good evening. Good evening, you. Good evening to all those who are watching us. Good evening to President Bia. Good evening to Professor Moise Kanto. Good evening to Nijon Fundi. And good evening to President Koso. And of course, Senior Barrister Asho and all political stakeholders. Good evening. <laughs> So uh, you did not, you did not greet the guys of PAP. Why? <laughs> I say all. Oh, if you follow that all. No, no, no. You mentioned names. Yeah. <laughs> you get to PAP. Okay. Good evening to you, uh, Fabrice. No, no. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Leo. Thank you. At least you both should recognize the efforts of the opposition of the PAP defending the interests of, of the of the English especially, Cameroonians. Especially the young. Here to talk on behalf of. Especially the young generation. Kudos to uh, to what you guys are doing. Also, we are awaiting the arrival of uh, Dr. Uh, Michael Dimancho, who uh, has indicated that he's on his way. He's caught in traffic. We hope he joins us uh, before uh, we go even half of uh, this edition of the program. I'll start with you, um, Fabrice Lena, PAP. Uh, were you or are you surprised that another lockdown is called uh, this time around? Caption: Indefinite lockdown. Well, Celio, I'm not uh, surprised to be say to say I'm surprised. I'm not surprised, and uh, to look at um, the duration of the war 
the time it has taken already, uh, all the tough moments we've uh, been through, the people that are actually resident in Bamenda and Boya have been through, and uh, looking at the circumstances at hand, uh, I don't think an indefinite lockdown is necessary at this moment. We think that um, the leaders who take decision on behalf of the people, mm -hmm. I mean the people of um, Northwest and Southwest, the people of the Southern Cameroons, people who take decisions on their behalf should consider their own interests. Because their own interest is also about their economic activities. Their own interest is also about their daily life. Their own interest is also about their freedom. Their own interest is also about how they are living their life. Because, Mr. Leo, we have only one life to live here. Eh? We have only one life to live. And uh, if the war is going to stay for 10, 20 years or the number of time that it will take, we are not praying for it to stay that long. We, yes, we are not praying to, to for the, for it to stay that long. But if it is going to be so, we will not be all the time putting people under the pressure of indefinite lockdown. When I make calls back home, when I visit these environments, I look at how life is unfolding there. It's really very, very tough. And I will say that the leaders need to uh, reconsider their strategy of indefinite lockdown because as an individual, it is not the best. And it, it, even if they have to put lockdown, it needs to be very, very strategic. And uh, it should not be indefinite. Because indefinite means you're putting the people to what we call um, uh, suspense without anticipation of end. You don't know when it will end. And especially in Bamenda, the people in this particular city have over suffered when it comes to this crisis. I remember the last time they, they came up with this um, uh, indefinite lockdown again, it ended up in a, a reaction of the government, which, which came with clean Bamenda, Operation Clean Bamenda, and we saw the disastrous effect, the, the number of bloodshed that came along with the number of economic loss, the number of humanitarian crisis that it accompanied. So I think that um, the, the, the leaders are not really working for the interest of the people, or to an extent, they are not consulting the people to take decisions in their interest. Because if we talk about the people, we should think carefully about the interests of the people and consult them before we take this decision. I'm not sure that grassroots um, civil society organizations in Bamenda or Boya have been consulted for these things, some of these decisions to be taken. I'm not sure some of the local uh, representatives, politicians, uh, youth leaders, uh, football clubs, those people who have social uh, institutions, organizations, who are living in this place are consulted because the response you get uh, from them when you discuss about the situation is that we are suffering, it's not easy, we don't know what to do, and so on and so forth. I understand that it is a situation of war. I understand that it's a situation of revolution. But then we need to consider decisions that we take on the civilians. We know that it is our government, which is always uh, a stubborn one, which is always the one that is not always uh, um, doing the right thing for its citizens. But if you are a liberator, you should liberate the people without putting your own uh, uh, conscience into doubt or credibility into doubt by taking decisions that do not respect or reflect the aspirations of the people you are trying to protect. Okay. Uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Mungwa, uh, you are a counselor uh, for yes. less than five, and uh, you are getting information that your people are going to be under an indefinite uh, lockdown. Have you called back home to find out how the people received this news? Yeah, it's quite sudden, uh, Mr. Kuhn. Uh, I was supposed to be in Bamenda since last week, and uh, fortunately, I couldn't make it because of this uh, lockdown, uh, which actually is uh, is frustrating, really, really frustrating. Not only our government, but the entire economy and uh, the population itself. The lockdown, I think, is supposed to be a refrain. We actually have 
got the privilege and opportunity to be able to move closer in order to see how we can develop our economy. Uh, it's true that uh, our people had the joining course, but then uh, they say uh, force is not actually uh, a solution in remedying all problems. We trust and believe that there are other arenas which we can use to approach the crisis in which uh, we are undergoing for the past four years. And uh, each and everyone, even a blind person, can see at this juncture that uh, our population is being terrorized, they're frustrated. Uh, our development can't enhance due to the multiple lockdowns, which has no meaning, has no sense of directions. I trust that those who are swelling and uh, actually spearheading this lockdown should sit back on the platform and review exactly what the reason there. They say two wrongs can make a right. So it's high time we actually look for possible ways to end this crisis because uh, it's really, really frustrating and it's costing our population a lot. Okay. Uh, you, you are not in it? Yeah, so far. Mm. Uh, I wanted to attribute uh, to one uh, former U.S. president by name Ronald Reagan who said uh, those who criticize politics as being a dirty game, why not get in and cleanse it? That's just the more reason why some of us have approached the million and to see into it that we contribute and see how we can bring development at the doorstep of our population, mostly at this juncture where decentralization process is ongoing. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow we will have ourselves to blame. That's the reality. We will have ourselves to blame because uh, we took over office last year, and uh, honestly speaking, within the first four months, our team, with the mayor, was able to dock three head roads of five five kilometers. Okay, you mean the, you mean the mayor of Tuba? The mayor of Tuba. Okay, but yep. okay. Um, I, I hope that we create a, a a platform where you'll be able to. Tell the population what uh, mayor is uh, Tanjong. No? Tanjong, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mayor and Tanjong, Martin. Mm. And uh, what I was insinuating was just that uh, with the continuous crisis, honestly speaking, it doesn't give us the free hands in order to build our economy. Okay. Uh, your first reaction when you heard that there was uh, going to be an indefinite uh, lockdown, because as we speak. Many persons in Bermuda are indoors. They did not go out today, and possibly tomorrow they still are going to be indoors. Well, um, it's, it's no surprise to me because in this crisis, I think um, if you are not expecting surprise in this, con in this in the context of the crisis, then you must not. It means you are not a Cameroonian. Um, what my reaction was that, uh, in whose interest is it going to be, and how is that going to advance the cause? of those who are advocating for the crisis and what is um, the effect as far as that is concerned on their corporate social responsibility with people liking or still supporting them from the moral perspective and still even on that ghost town because during war as a conflict uh, um, and as a negotiator I understand that before you take an action you must calculate or you must look at the, 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 the weight of the actions you want to take because your priority is to get the common man behind you as in as in the minority if you are fighting a war like in non-state armed groups 
your priority is always to get the common man behind you but when you start using measures which is against the same common man behind you then you should understand that you are you are delaying from where you 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 came from or you're coming from and equally you should understand that your days are gradually becoming numbered because when the common man is no longer your ally you you don't have any place to hide because you are fighting in plain sight so if you are instituting indefinite lockdown the first thing you ask yourself how are our fighters going to eat how are they going to get their medical supply how are they going to get their revenues how are they going to get their access to communication what gives a state independent it is not the fact that you don't have is not the ability for you to, is for, to have people who tell you do this don't do this independence simply means the ability of any state to produce resources of its own and control these resources on its own. Any state or any set of people who cannot produce resources on their own, who cannot uh, 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 control their revenue on their own, they are not independent. For example, when you say you're a young man, you're independent of your parents, what makes you independent is because you can hustle, you can buy food from your pocket, you can do your medical bills, you can pay your rent without your parents giving you any assistance. That is independent and that's how it contextualized within the state. So before you advocate for indefinite lockdown, there are principles you must have taken into consideration. How is it going to create the relationship between uh, uh, the common man and us? How is that going to advance that relationship? Already we live in a time when the relationship, has, the trust has, has uh, greatly died because first it began with our boys. Now it moves, it, later it moves to the boys. Now it moves to those boys. It means people are gradually saying those boys. Now you are, you, you still have some few sympathizers and you're instituting indefinite lockdown, meaning that you are giving the government the urge to tell the common man that, see, I told you people. So to me, this indefinite lockdown is counterproductive. Counterproductive in the sense that it's not going to advance their cause in any way, it's not going to create a good corporate social responsibility in any way, it's not going to harness, give the interest of the common man in any way. Remember, Mr. Liu, I always tell you that the government and the separatists, they have one thing in common. The one thing they have in common is that is the interest of the common man. They are fighting, regardless how they are fighting for, they are fighting for the interest of the common man. But they feel like it must be done through effect, the government feel like it must be done through effective or what has been baptized today to be accelerated decentralized which is still in a snail paste and the no separatists feel like no state angle feel like it can be achieved the interest of the common man can be protected when there is a total restoration of this state now the federalists still feel like it can be achieved only through federation the confederalists like dr Nee feel like the interest of the common man can only be achieved true confederation the, 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 the way they have differences is not their position this person feel like if it is not decentralization, then nothing should happen. This person feel like if it's not federation, nothing to happen. So now they are now fighting, using their position to destroy the interests they claim they are fighting to protect. Both parties, regardless of how they treat it, I feel like they should go back to their drawing board and look at, we are fighting for an interest of this common people, of this uh, the common man in the field. So whatever decision we take, we ask, how is that going to advance this interest of that common man? Is it going to make it counterproductive or not? Mr. Neo, I tell you, I tell you as uh, Fabrice at, uh, uh, earlier articulated uh, on, the, on, the, on the effect of this indefinite lockdown that was caused some time ago in Bamenda, we all saw the disastrous effect of indefinite lockdown. We saw how people were killed, uh, we saw how the uh, uh within this there was opposition clean bamenda and you will not expect any state to fold the arms no state in this world operate on morality no state i've not seen any state in this world that operate on morality because every state feel like there is that tendency for you to defend territorial integrity and no arm groups operate on morality too the same way they no state operate on morality no arm group operate on morality now the only way they have a common ground is the interest of that common man and what is that interest that anglophone should have freedom of expression they should not be marginalized they should have development they should have a way to control their own resources these are the interests of the common man they should have their common law should be effective the, this educational system should be purely anglo-saxon those are the interests now but the way we are carrying out this interest is counterproductive because how do you say you want that people should have freedom of expression when you see someone that disagree with you you call that person black leg pig this that that Therefore, you are against that same interest you are fighting for. If you claim that you are fighting for education and you claim that the educational system is poor, you are, are, are disturbing those who are going to school. You say you don't want no school, you don't want this. It means you are against all those things. The same way, I see the, the both parties are, are doing the same thing because sometimes, like when I was coming to Boya today, and I, in, in one of the checkpoints, they said, 
They told the driver, you know, this is ghost town, so you have to pay us more. It means you are promoting the ghost town. So in the, in the context of what I'm saying is that this indefinite lockdown, all those parties who are agitating, they should know that it is putting them at risk. It is making the common man to... The, 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 the disowning tendency will greatly increase. The common man will greatly disown them because if you see, we will have about, if you do a, a survey, I'm sure after this indefinite lockdown, you will have about 10% or 20% who will say, I'm not there for that thing again. So as days goes by, you keep having percentage that as to, I don't support you, I don't support you. And Okay. Now, uh, this is not the first lockdown, and you say you are not surprised because it is a strategy that consistently has been uh, used by those who are fighting. Um, Javis is also saying that uh, the more they are engaging in the in the in the uh, lockdowns, yeah. many more persons are, are no longer Disengaging. identified. Yes, but I, I want us to have it to 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 go back to the previous uh, ghost towns. What, according to you? as uh, the course that is being fought for achieved so far because of these lockdowns well i think that um if i want to put my place in the in the place of the leaders in europe or perhaps those they have link with uh, in the neighboring countries of cameroon and here in uh, the ground uh they are aimed at um uh making the government of yaoundé to feel challenged mm. uh in controlling the citizens of the southern Cameroons and uh, their objective is also to hold grip of the population more than the government only that at the early stage of the crisis it was quite possible for uh, uh, the people and the leaders because there was some sort of enthusiasm at the beginning of the crisis but right now as it stands we discover that things are actually changing what I want to say is that um, the problem of Cameroon is Mr. Ambia and the CBDM regime. That is the problem of Cameroon in general. Now, the, the southern Cameroon question or the Anglophone question can be solved within the context of this particular regime, given that the international community put sanction to this regime to, to go down for negotiations. And also given that uh, some of the uh, political leaders like the PAP and those who think that the problem of Cameroon can be solved with a political transition or the, the question of Anglophone can be solved in a negotiation wherein we sit and discuss and agree on the basis of living together or the basis of not living together so that we could start a new republic. But when we keep on insisting on our, uh, when the, 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 those who are for the separatist agenda keep insisting on their point of keeping the population on indefinite lockdowns, on continuous war, when at their own site the enthusiasm for independence is declining. Because when you look at the percentage of um, opinion poll or sample that were made in the early 2017, 18, 19, about more of the population of Southern Cameroon wanted independence, actually. But when you conduct that same survey today in 2021, you will discover that the percentage have dropped drastically. Evidence is what? When Cardinal Tumi did his research before he was going to national dialogue, he talked about some 86 percent of the people of southern cameroon wanting independence but when the coalition for dialogue and negotiation came with their own statistics it was 69 percent so what is the cause of this drop is the strategies that this leader in europe are putting in place because like um my co said you cannot be fighting to protect the people and you are carrying measures that the very people are suffering enormously from such measures I, for example, as a, a, a young political leader uh, advocating for a political party that has been standing for the Anglophone cause all along since the beginning of this crisis, to the extent that we say we cannot go for elections, we cannot partake in the national politics of Cameroon if this crisis is not solved, I have been receiving a lot of calls and, and messages recently from the uh, different divisions of North and South West that we thought this thing could move, but now we really want to join our hands in the politics of mobilizing to use a different strategy so that we could defend our rights and have those things that we have been fighting for in the political means. You see that the mindset of people are changing from the violent aspect of fighting a war today 
building peace and using what politics and democracy because what i tell people is that engage in the political game and defend the minority rights within the context of a political party because when we keep on saying that politics cannot work political party have failed i tell you that even if you go back biblically you discover that most of the successful uh, people like the job and their their patience consistency and resistance courage mm. took a very long time before mm. the reward came Mm. But what is happening in uh, with our fellow youths from the Southern Cameroon brother and sister is that they are very impatient. Most of the time, you carry out an action one, two, three years. Very soon, you give up. You say no, no. We have to be consistent. We have to be patient. We have to be resilient. Okay, and but, we have to keep up uh, Doctor, uh, doing the right Doctor, thing. Doctor Michael and Dimacho is uh, in the studio with us. Uh, we thank God you were able to beat the traffic and join uh, in our discussions uh, for this evening. You are for me, just go. Uh, please. I can't take a call. Good evening to you, wherever you are watching us, and also a special evening for me, Jasko. Can you stop calling, please? And also a special evening to you, um, Reverend Father Beltus Asanji. We hope that you are praying for the people of uh, Bomenda, <laughs> where you are watching us from. You are also praying for us back here in Douala. Uh, Dr. Michael, um, you have reaction to the lockdown that uh, the people are uh, now uh, living under? Well, what is my reaction? Is yes. that the, 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 the people uh, saw a marriage. I mean, the marriage was that they saw something that they were going in for, and at one moment, they realized that that marriage that they saw was just actually a distraction of what actually they want to be. And that is what they are looking at today. They saw independence. Independence was very far, and they thought they are going to walk like the children of Israel, to get to that independent, get to that promised land, and they have reached halfway, and they have been waiting for Moses to come down with what God has said on the mountain. And they are not foreseen. And that is where the problem is today. And now, uh, let me take us memory down to actually the issues that actually brought about what we are going on today. You re realize that before independence, in 1957, there is somebody who talked about, who formed a party, and they called that party One Cameroon. That was Nde Tumasa. And Nde Tumasa actually lived in Bermuda. And that party was supposed to be an Anglophone party. It means that there were some visionaries who looked and actually saw something in Cameroon. And they realized that the only best way for Cameroonians to live was to live as brothers and sisters. That, I mean, was the vision of our forefathers. That was the vision of our independent, uh, do we call independent fathers. We, we, people like Mome, people like Owanji and all those people, they saw that and they told us one of the best ways for us to live was to live as a people. And, and they were talking about the issue of a people. And you know, even right up to the people, uh, the groups like Skakov and NCNC, when they went to Banju with the people's rights and whatsoever, they said they recognize you as a people, but not as an independent entity in a, actually a one Cameroon. I mean, people, we have left, left from there and we have come up to this area. And now we are now with the issues of lockdown. What is about lockdown? The lockdown was that people after thought independence was going to come to, tomorrow. And we have realized that that independence of tomorrow yeah, is becoming something of one hundred years. And you see, now, but what I want to say is that Anglophones, per se, have not lost the vision of independence, but they have lost the confidence in those who promised their independence. Let us distinguish these two things. Exactly. Yes, That's they have not lost the vision of independence, but they have lost confidence in those who propose independence to them. It means that what? Perhaps we need to go back to the drawing board. Mean that their principles, mean that their goal, mean that their intention, mean that their wish has continued to be that because if they say today that okay we have forgotten what we are talking about it means that anglophones have i mean the issue of marginalization has stopped the issue of anglophones being uh, the second class in cameroon has stopped but it has not stopped what has stopped is the issue of egoism the issue of actually uh, i mean manipulation with, within ourselves that is what has stopped because some people took this as business now we're talking about ghost towns. Ghost town has, I mean, 
actually experience what we call, I mean, a slowdown. And those who respect goes down today is not because they really want to res respect. It is because they fear, there's a fear of the unknown. That fear of the unknown is hovering in the uh, atmosphere. And people think that, okay, if a restaurant goes down, well, I don't want to respect, but I have to respect because I fear somebody who is going to come in for me. But the Angophones, being what they are, there are people who express their minds. And I think that, ap I mean, aptly, they have done that. And they will continue to do that. And the fact is that the issue of ghost towns has no place again. I was talking with some, I uh, mean, uh, I don't want to call them separatists. I talked with two people today, and I asked them, for the past four years today, that you have been declaring ghost towns. What have you gained in declaring ghost towns? Well, it was surprising to me that even those who declare, those in the bushes who declare ghost towns, they do not know exactly why they are declaring ghost towns. That's my, what, what I, I got today. They, they do not know. They just want to respect some kind of others. And somebody told me, yes, it is something that we are put and that we have to respect. You are respecting for what? Let us ask ourselves, who declared ghost town? You declared ghost town for who? And for what? Those are three fundamental questions to ask. Who declared ghost town for who and for what? What have you gained or what have you benefited from de uh, or, uh, declaring ghost town for four years today? There is no answer. The answer is hovering the air. Nobody has the answer to the up to now. They keep on saying, okay, we are looking up to independence. What independence? The independence for who and for what? So we need to be very, very careful. The point is that many people have been misled. Let us direct people. Let us direct this for our boys. And we have gotten to the point whereby people have turned this into a kind of business. Why do you turn into business? Why are you playing a game on people's life? Why are you manipulating people? Why are you bringing people to the point where they are not supposed to be? Why are people where they okay. are? Ask yourself this question, and then we will understand where the ghost towns then. Good evening to you, uh, Mengang and Sope and Isel. Uh, you see, haha, people who have to energy other than to talk, okay? Uh, good evening to you, Entry, Elv, and uh, to all of you watching us uh, via social uh, media. Now, uh, uh, Mr. Amungwa, you are, yes, you are a municipal councillor for Bomenda. He did not tell us what the ghost towns or the, the, the the lockdowns have achieved uh, so so far why place an indefinite uh, lockdown on a people uh what happens in cases of emergency there are persons who are pregnant there are sick persons and uh, who may not be able to move around what happens especially uh in this case i don't know whether people were even asked to stock their homes how do they survive yeah uh, thanks again once more mr kum uh, it's really, really uh, uh, sad, and uh, I term it hogwash because this question you just asked, if you do a census, those who are actually masterminding this lockdown, so they won't be able to. Like my co-panelist, doctor, just said uh, a few minutes ago, the objectives of the ghost town and who uh, was attributed, who was the target and why of the ghost town. I want to refresh my memory in the 90s where the SEF uh, actually had to use ghost town as one of their tools for their voice to be heard. And uh, within the long run, their, their, their voice was heard and they had to retrieve from the ghost towns. Uh, that was uh, why so of them? And today, if our people thought ghost town was also a formula for their voice to be heard across their pride, then I think it's high time the authors of ghost town they agree that they actually missed the target because so far. It's not helping anyone. The government itself is losing. The uh, separatist fighters uh, are losing. 
the local population is losing most because uh, in emergency cases where someone is supposed to be rushed to a hospital, and even the separatist fighters, uh, in the course of exchange, and uh, at the end of the day, they need for medical centers where they need to be treated. And if those medical centers are being shut down, how are they going to survive? Food stuffs, which are supposed to, people don't have money every day. Why you say you can buy in bulk and then stock at home? But uh, unfortunately, when spontaneous ghost towns are taken unaware, which you were expecting to have money the next day, maybe they rush to the market. And uh, suddenly, within the late hours of the, the, the day, they tell you tomorrow is lockdown. Uh, it, it becomes very, very frustrating. Maybe you were supposed to uh, rush to the hospital at the end of the day. They tell you tomorrow is lockdown. What becomes of you? I mean, your life is at stake. So it applies to each and everyone. It's not a uh, matter of the government. It's not a matter of, uh, of, of uh, uh, individuals. I think both of us are actually suffering the impact of these lockdowns. If you look statistically for the past four years, what lockdowns have caused is really enormous. A company like CDC was second employer in Cameroon. They were generating a turnover of over 30 billion a month. But today, how much are they generating? Less than 5 billion francs. Most of our brothers and sisters, they are at home. And uh, those who tend to be the separatist fighters, they need energy in order to charge their mobile utilities. They need food. They need... Uh, 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 electricity as well, I mean, all the assets or facilities which each and every human being requires for a day-to-day -day running of the life, they both need, but at the end of the day, you see there are barriers to these assets. So uh, it doesn't make any sense. I think we should change the formula of the lockdowns and attribute. They say there are so many ways you can catch a rat. It's high time the make sure we look for another arena of lockdowns in order to boost the economy okay we, yes uh good evening mr lewis julius from uh great support uh great support is in Boya. i love your program keep it up thank you very uh, much um uh, good evening mr liu tell uh mr lena that uh, the pap refused going in for elections because the party uh, is unpopular and it's not known it should. Okay. It's unpopular. Okay. Which means he has it no should, it <laughs> should, it should, They should stop uh, pretending to be sympathizing with anglophones and tell a doctor that they are anglophones who are educated than them. They should keep on feeding uh, their stomachs and stop coming to the media to talk irrelevant things. Let him know that ghost towns has an an economic impact on the state. Just to name just one. Thanks, uh, Greg. Yeah, but the question is, what has it achieved so far? That is my question. Yeah. Uh, good day to you all in the studio. Good day to you all in the studio, sir. Concerning uh, what Mr. Cho is talking about, uh, he knows exactly what to do. He should stop blaming the guys. Uh, if the guys are more than them to control, they should uh, blame themselves because of what we have done uh, to us on Ground Zero. Ngwa is writing from uh, Abakwa. Okay, he's uh, reacting to the outing of Ayabachu Lucas, who was uh, lambasting the fighters for derailing from the fight and now uh, uh, causing more havoc on the population. This was said, those de declaring those ghost towns all the time are very stupid. I'm a student from the University of Bermuda. We are tired of all this. When will such things ever come to an end? Okay, um, good evening to you. Um, Well, no, that message is not for me. This one says, uh, Lion Chop Lion, okay? Good evening, Mr. Leo. I am I am in Bermenda. Amber has no control over the people. These guys are cowards. When you go against lockdown, they attack you in the night. And from what we have been hearing, lockdown ends today, Monday. You are tired to using indefinite lockdown place, the Amber game by, instilling more fear on the people. No, that is what we heard. 
except they are changing That's now. What they communicate. The, yes, uh, uh, Chris Anu announced uh, an indefinite lockdown. Neba is writing from Bamenda. Good evening to you, uh, Neba. Uh, Mr. Liu, good evening. Aside from Yaoundé, Mr. Liu, I have discovered that till outside powers who are waiting this war stop sending money and support to their preferred side, then this crisis might not come to an end. Okay. Uh, good evening, Mr. Liu. I'm happy to take part in the discussions of today. I think for us to better understand the reason for the indefinite lockdown, I think it's high time these guys should be invited to a discussion like this, uh, one so very important, really. It's Terence writing from Yaoundé. Uh, greetings, Mr. Kum. I, Sylvester from Bermuda. To my opinion, the so-called uh, people are supposed to talk on the panel. Okay, um, where are they? They are not around now. <laughs> where do you want me to have them to talk here? Uh, this one says, a beautiful contribution from Tal Javis. Uh, good evening, Mr. Liu, and good evening to all the panelists. Special greetings to Mr. Fabrice uh, Lena. Good evening to you too. Uh, Father Beltus, hi, sir. Tomorrow uh, is not uh, locked down, okay? Meaning <laughs> something is changing. Uh, from suddenly we are we, we are getting information that tomorrow is not lockdown, which means that the indefinite lockdown. I don't know whether it was a bluff, but the lockdown issue in where is the interest of the population in this the, the, the lockdown? Like I said before, that in any crisis, um, be it the the government or the separatists, mm -hmm. um, they have what we call weighing the possibilities of your actions as far as building your image is concerned. If you look at what is happening in the Tigray region now in Ethiopia, it's seemingly the same way like the Anglophone region, like mm. Dr. Demancho said that um, the people of North and Southwest region, according to Dr. Demancho, have not derailed from the independent quest, but they have derailed from those who are carrying out the actions and whose action is against what they stand for. Now, if you look at this ghost town action, the question you ask yourself if you are a fighter is that how is this going to advance our corporate interest with the common man? How is that going to rebuild the faith the common man has with us? Because if we look at it from a geometric way, it is the trust is going down. And if we look at it from a, a different perspective, you see that the tr confidence that the common man has for these people is, dec is declining because they say even a goat, when pushed to the wall, can bite. Sometimes when the people begin to feel like, okay, we are, we love this tendency, let's keep aside, we, let's keep on to this, they keep respecting their normal Monday uh, ghost town, and you come now with an indefinite lockdown, how are you able to control this territory in the first place? Before you call for this indefinite lockdown, it means you have uh, uh, some of the ingredients that quantify you as an independent state. One, you have an emergency, you have a, 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 an emergency center that handles emergency cases. You have an emergency unit that handles emergency cases. Two, you have a maintenance unit that ensures that electricity or power short power outage are handled. You have a unit that ensures that food supply is handled. You have a unit that ensures that those who are uh, the, uh, in, in need of, let's say, someone need to go out of the of that region for an emergency issue or be it health or any other issue is handled but in this context they don't have that none is applicable so the only thing they have is fear and the gun now the fear and the gun is it going to give the common man that interest to love you no now you see that in areas like in moya go to moya moya was a dead zone before but now it's no longer a dead zone people are no longer wanting to hear the phrase ghost town i mean or ghost town or lockdown because they feel like it is more is prolonging than it is, is counterproductive it doesn't give them that effect if a common man lock the business from one week from not uh, next year how would that affect president Bia? nothing the only thing is the government will strategize but this is it if you go to a different strategy the strategy that you may want to use what's the strategy what it is the interest of the common man. I, I earlier elaborated the interest, and I will give it a, a, a brief synopsis. If we look at what gives the, the people of the Tiger region in Ethiopia the, 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 the crisis now, 
before they had a similar system that were which was on marginalization now they decided to go into a political landscape when they went to political landscape and they won the majority of seats in the region they automatically declared themselves independent because they had the weapon they have everything they had all, all the material and i believe that's what common governments afraid of federation that's the simple reason why governments afraid of federation that if we give you federation the same system which is happening in Ethiopia may be that same system that may happen now that Assuming that all the angry phone fighters decide that, okay, let's stop fighting with the guns, let's go into a political parties, let's form a political party, let's take in effective decentralization, let's take all the councils, and if they take all the councils, they have their resources in, at their disposal. What happens? Nothing stops them to declare that, hey, we are not independent. The same thing if all the, if they say, okay, let's go to, 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 to test the federation, the governor of Northern South West region, if all of them are angry phones and they decide that, hey, we are not key aspiration or independent. Let's go. So when people keep talking about this strategy, strategy, they should look at what is applicable in other nations and why the government may not want to condescend to an action, not because they don't like it, but because they feel like now this is what the government has to do. Solve the crisis, it kills the aspiration of the people. When you solve the crisis from the root causes, it kills the people that thought to ever believe that they want independence or they want separation because the common man in North and South West region does not even want independence, does not want separation, does not want federation. What the common man wants is, let me leave my house peacefully and come back, let me have a chance to talk freely, let me have a chance for my children to study effectively and have a job, let me have a, the, the, the opportunity to go to the market and sell my goods, let me have the opportunity to open my business with low tax, income, low tax imposed on me, let me have the opportunity for police to respect me. Now, those are the, that's what the man want on the, the North and South West people want. They don't want to hear federation separation, but now the leaders in different fair are coming up with positions to channel them that this is, I can provide this need on this road, I can provide the needs on this road. To me, let's dissolve all this thought uh, and focus on what's the need of a common man okay if your need is to bring us peace mm. then bring us a peace okay a we cannot do the same thing and expect a different uh result uh, putting in place an indefinite lockdown is pathetic the communities cannot continue living in fear and uncertainty they should come down and be part of the lockdown jn agbo good evening to you uh jn agbo good evening uh, Mr. Liu, I'm glad with those on the table. Please try and create a debate and inc invite Chris Anu and I have a thanks so, uh, thanks so they stop leading people in the bus. It's Bobga writing from Bali. Good evening to you, uh, Bobga. Hi, Mr. Liu and Mr. Lucas from Limbe. This is getting out of hand. This is not uh, what we began for. When we were told of independence, now too much of blood has gone down, but God uh we will wait uh to see the outcome uh good evening mr liu to you all i love your program very well special greetings to Tar javis he knows the field very well uh from alhaji masco okay uh good evening to you alhaji masco good evening mr liu mr lena has reversed the percentage of the two surveys cardinal survey was 69 and the coalition survey was above 80 percent i'm not sure huh? I'm not sure that was uh, the situation. Good evening to you, uh, people in the studio. Chris Anu did not conclude on the issue of indefinite lockdown. Okay. Uh, Christian is writing from uh, Bamenda. Uh, good evening to you, Christian. <laughs> Mr. Liu, good evening. There is no indefinite lockdown. We're going to resume our activities tomorrow. Mr. Liu, I really blame the people of Bermuda because they are the ones that forwarded the messages of lockdown. If people do not forward those messages, the lockdown will not work. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yes. Uh, uh, no. Um, in whose name are these uh, lockdowns declared now as we speak? Yeah, Mr. Liu. I will first of all want to say that, you know, in every society when there's crisis, uh, there are two interests. Okay. There's individual interest and collective interest. Mm -hmm. Even in organizations, it's like that. There's individual interest and collective interest. Individual interest is um, personal aspiration of every individual at the level of a child, at the level of parents, at the level mm -hmm. of youth, at the level of everyone. Collective interest now is what a people as a society wants. Mm -hmm. So all the uh decisions of ghost town and lockdown is against the individual interests of people okay. when i say individual interests i want to take a small analysis because a common trader in bamenda or in kumba who does not go to the market every monday just have uh four 
out of the seven days to work mm -hmm. or to go to the market loses a certain amount of money which is supposed to go to his personal pocket and increase his personal welfare and standard of living that is that is reduction in individual interest mm -hmm. and welfare which means the trend or level at which that person's personal business was supposed to grow has fallen look at the level uh, the side of education since the lockdown came and with a stop to education the individual aspiration of children who were supposed to uh, from 2016 to 2021 be in university be in high schools be in certain classes have dropped drastically because they are they were unable to attain their individual uh, individual objectives or individual interests now what happens most of them struggle amidst the difficult economy with the difficult finances to cross to other places pass through terrible testimonies and conditions in order to achieve individual goals hmm. then now you you go to healthcare. there are many people who have died because of inaccessibility to healthcare mm -hmm. because of lockdowns i i know the situations of bali Kumbat, uh the situation of kumbo Belo. i i know the situation of kwakwa in 2018 2019 when uh i used to go for humanitarian aid in the ground and i we discovered that most of the time lockdown comes to adversely affect the population more than uh, the collective society and the funny thing about all this is that it is mostly for the most vulnerable mm -hmm. because social status and material condition of people who are better place permits them to take audience cars and arrange situations where they could easily rush themselves to other places and have those services that the they, they poor people could not have mm -hmm. and then when you look at our collective interest of this lockdown what is the collective English interest? As anglophone people, most of the uh, uh, micro and macro Businesses, organizations yeah. and institutions, mm. enterprises and business that used to employ, take for example, CDC have dropped, Pamol have dropped, Sonara have dropped, all, the schools. all those people have dropped. Now when you look at the big, big schools, the Our Lady of Law, the Sacred Heart College, the GPHS Bamenda, the PCHS Mancon, the, the Sase, and the, and the rest. All the children that used to leave the friend zone and envy to go and school in Bamenda, to go and school in Kumba, you see, all these things have dropped, which, are, which has reduced the income of all the teachers and proprietors of this zone. I want to look at collective interest still. When you still look at the collective interest, all infrastructures that have been destroyed here is for the hope of what reconstructing after independence mm -hmm. now what is marveling me as a leader a political leader is that the the leaders who are taking this decision are not assessing the ability of the independence vision mm -hmm. because the ability of the in, independent vision has to do with three stakes the population that we are fighting for our adversary which is the government of cameroon what are their measures and how is it because the measures of the government is winning the population on a geometric rate mm -hmm. than the measures of the separatists which for me is a, a is something that is supposed to be a reason for auto examination evaluation before you take further measures now when they also look at the international community the international community is the worst place I am saying this based on my own little experience that I've had in the field of trying to mediate, negotiate, go around and talk to some people that Engaging I know. Engaging most of the Engaging diplomatic circles in Yaoundé. Exactly, in mm. Yaoundé and the youth. What I came to realize is this. These diplomats get different reports from the government, get different reports from the separatists, and they sit down, evaluate, and take their decision. And people take decision first on personal interests before collective interests. Because every rational diplomat, politician, leader, first of all, look at how can I, as an individual, help the society? You must first of all examine your own self. You cannot give what you don't have. If you don't have money, you will not help the society with money. If you don't have the knowledge, you cannot lead the society without having strategy that will hold on to the society. So I also want to applaud the suggestion of Jarvis, who says that people should first of all think of what uh, um, uh, getting involved into politics of mm -hmm. the country, mm -hmm. getting hold of their region or their area of, of, of command before bargaining. Mm -hmm. 
Because what has the, happened with the Anglophone crisis is that it has weakened politics in the Anglophone zone, mm -hmm. given power to CBDM, who are now dominating. And the funny thing in all these things is that, Mr. Leo, in all the 13 divisions and, sub, uh, and the different subdivisions on our side is CPDM. Mm. And I was expecting that by 2020 21, the leaders of separate will give us a balance sheet of the areas they are uh, uh, getting hold of. Because if by this time we were at least at, uh, let's say, three subdivisions, four subdivisions, or even a division where they could use it as a bargain to the government. Are you getting? We will, we should have had some sort of substantial reason to say that okay, if in Bamenda people are having difficulty, they can go to the Amazonian state of this place or department of this place and treat themselves. But on the contrary, the CBDM and all they are, they are, they are still putting for their agenda. Life is going on smoothly. Yaoundé is, is, is celebrating, and the Anglophone continue to wallow in abject poverty. And we still have those leaders who defraud the people and continue to leave uh, the, 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 the manipulations of 2016 that brought in place this, this crisis. I am analyzing objectively based on the experience I've seen on the ground. I'm not against the Anglophone cause. I am for the Anglophone cause. And I always say, our party always stands. If we go to the negotiation table and we bring our bargain, an international community and a mediator can listen to us such that at the end, we do not agree to live as people under a country. We go our separate ways. But if we can agree, we define the conditions under which we will live together. But the present disposition of punishing our own people mm -hmm. is not right. Okay, it's not uh, right, uh, Dr. Michael Dimanchu. Uh, do you see the people endorsing uh, the ghost towns and uh, the lockdowns? Because you see the decisions are not taken in the interest, general interest. But the people themselves... The silence is it that they are helpless? Are they not endorsing this? I think that the people, in one way, are helpless. Okay, they are helpless, and of course, they still have a part to play. Uh, you know, uh, you believe in something, and at one moment, what you believe in doesn't really give you the the strength to go further about your belief. There is another force that is there to tell you your belief. And that is where the people are found. You know, they are, they are in the middle of the sea. Uh, and they, um, they, they are asking themselves whether to go back or to go ahead about what is happening. They are not the ones playing the cards. They are just like people who are being manipulated. Those who are being told what to do. Those who are being dictated to. They, they, they don't have a decision at the point in time. And really, I don't really want to put the blame on the people. You know, uh, in Cameroon, this has exposed, the Anglo crisis has exposed us to so many things. The issue of security. Mm -hmm. well, to understand that, actually, the government is not a total guarantor of security in our country. We have to understand that fact. And that we ourselves, if we do not join the government in guaranteeing the safety of our citizens and ourselves, then we are all gone. This has exposed us, the Angkor crisis has exposed us to that because you realize that what is going in the Angkor regions, the government has tried what they could do, and it appears as if the government itself is very, very helpless. It's not even though it doesn't appear. It is true that the government has tried and in a little way is helpless. And now the population, like, they are in the middle between the separatists and the government. Who are they supposed to go to? To the separatists or to the government? At one moment, you see the people running to the bushes. And where are they, when they say to the bushes, who do we think about? We are thinking about separatists. Immediately, they are going to meet the separatists for safety. At one moment, you find that the people are running to the military. or to, I mean, when we say the military, we mean the government. They are looking for safety. And again, the people are totally helpless. They are either supporting the lockdown or they are against this lockdown. They do not want to have an overt uh, impression or an overt support or overt about what is happening. But then, let, let us be very careful because uh, it gives us an impression that we need to do more as a people. First of all, as a people of the Norway and South region, they have been in the situation whereby they have actually be at the mercy of, I mean, a, an external force. When I talk about external force, is because I look at the government whereby it's supposed to send the soldiers to actually defend the people in the middle, in the midst of this war, 
or I'm looking at the separatists who think that they have to defend the people because the separatists themselves, they are only threatening. They do not support the people because each day when something happens, I mean, what they, they are full of accusing the government so forces of killing the people. Means that the separatists themselves are not able to provide the necessary help that the people need. And that's where there's a problem. So you put, put the people in a very, very desperate situation whereby they do not know where to run to. You know, they are miserable people. They are people who are looking for help. And therefore, we actually, we have to put the line, I mean the red line, and to be able to ask ourselves, there is a time whereby we have to speak the truth. And I think that this is a time of the truth that we have to speak it. Whether you live in the Northwest or you live in the Southwest region, you have to speak, to speak the truth at this present moment. I just told you about talking to some people, some of the separatists. And, and, and one of the issues is that I, I realize that some of them are even helpless. They are asking themselves how they got there, how they got to where they are today. Because they are not seeing any, I mean, a headway to what they are doing. They, 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 they are just doing it because somebody else somewhere said they should do that, and they are doing it. Somebody somewhere is sending them little coins, and they just feel that they don't have to do it. And they, they are looking at something ahead. They are actually, they are not seeing the clear image of what they are looking at. But they will just want to go like sheep. But how, how, no. how, 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 how do you mean that our people are fighting for what they know not or what they are fighting of for? Of course, if you ask most of them today, what that independence means for them, I'm telling you honestly, most of them do not know what that independence is all about. Like, I mean, I think Tad Javis said, it is like people who had a longing for something. You have a feeling that you need something. And at the end of it all, you are asking for that thing. And at one moment, you realize that even what you are asking for, you don't even know exactly what to define what you are asking for. Because, i give you an example. The, in the 1990s, there was a crisis in France. And then the journalists came to some of those who were, were, were actually shouting and they talked about changing the society. And the journalist put a microphone in, on, the, on the mouth of one of the youth and asked, what actually, exactly, are you asking for? He said, we are asking for better condition. We are asking for better condition. And the journalist put the microphone in the, in the mouth of the youth and asked, what better condition are you asking for? What level of education do you have? And you, and you, and you will not imagine what happened. The youth just ran away. He didn't know what to say because he didn't have any level of education that they said if they say this is independent today and they, and i say i'm in a ministry of education i'm an educationist and i say i'm employing the youth who have been advanced for what did you ask people to uh, apply and send their document most of them will not send the document and that is where i say they are looking for something that they don't know exactly what they are looking for they i mean during the at the verge of uh let me tell you at the verge of this crisis in 1960 most of the youth were informed about this crisis about five six seven eight ten months before time and the promise they gave the youth was that you know this thing was going to take just one month two months three months and then when we are most have gotten our indicator in the we will make you soldier we'll make you lieutenant and we'll make you generous and this is where they were four years down the line they are not the, they are not the colonels that they promised them four years down the line they are not the generals that they promised them Four years down the line, they are not working in the ministries that they promised them. So where are they? It means that they are confused people that need to be redirected. Okay, uh, uh, Mr. Amungwa. Now, lockdowns, how far should the lockdowns, uh, should, oh, is, that, that is, is, is it time to re-strategize, rethink, and actually understand that the people can't survive with these constant lockdowns? Yeah, it's high time uh, lockdown should be re-strategized, like uh, earlier indicated. I've been on the ground uh, for four months, five months, mm -hmm. working under my constituency. And uh, I felt so bad that I, should, uh, I could approach the people. I saw their sufferings, I saw how miserable they are. <laughs> Honestly speaking, as uh, doctor just indicated you know in church you want people who only there to say amen and you ask them to repeat the prayer which was just uh, 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 uh prayed they, they, they can't repeat it but you find them saying amen that's just to tell you many of these young men were manipulated if you ask them what are the objectives of this crisis they would not be able to tell you i spoke with some of them as well and uh, so far Today, they are willing to withdraw and get out of 
the bushes but unfortunately they have some barriers of some not even having birth certificates some not even having id cards and uh, those are only barriers for them to to to, to live in the northwest or southwest region and found themselves back in their uh, cities of uh, uh, origin like Douala where they were actually for fetching for greener pastors that they, they have those barriers they cannot make it and then i'm asking myself those who actually masterminded all of these and uh, manipulated them what measures are they taking okay these are people you you you, you say they are your soldiers or whatsoever your separatists fighters and uh, today many of them are coming to realize that it was a total manipulation and they are getting back to their senses because uh, some of them uh, sit behind and then review the number of lives they have lost for their families. They go, I, I was adopted, uh, uh, I'm, I'm must say this again on the platform because uh, uh, it's a bitter experience. And uh, unfortunately, I saw the life these guys were living, it was miserable. And then you have some of them called the top leaders or their commanders. You were you abducted, I remember. Mm -hmm. Yes, I was adopted in August. And uh, they took me to an under uh, the nation, and they only unveil uh, uh, my vision when I was within their, their, their vicinity. And uh, I can tell you, these guys, I saw them going for four days. The highest food they were living on was water. There's a truth. So you will imagine that these are people who are fighting for the cause and then you have some people who call leaders who are keeping them somewhere and they don't even care but they are living luxurious life living in comfort zones and then they they, 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 they keep others in the bushes and they are living frustratedly you negotiated well, your release i never negotiated my release okay yeah uh, only the almighty the, the the night where they were supposed to take life out of me i i prayed for heavens to come down and uh, honestly speaking, the Almighty had to survive me out of. Ask me how I got up out of that place. I, I, I can't tell you. I spent two nights in the bush. And I found myself uh, uh, somewhere very far off, uh, out of uh, my captured uh, vicinity. I was captured around the, uh, I mean, the, 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 the council premises. What was my crime? My crime was because I needed development to take place in my constituency. Okay. That was the reason why I was captured okay. and nothing else. Good evening, so, Mr. Lee. Okay. Yeah. Slan, okay. Yeah, so it's really, really uh, embarrassing and frustrating. Okay. It's high time I'm calling on the leaders of those who actually masterminded the ghost town or lockdowns. They should re strategize. You are using this platform to say that uh, you are a municipal councillor. Are you talking to the boys in uh, Tuba? Well, not only talking to the boys in Tuba, I am addressing to the leaders who have been uh, manipulating the guys on the ground zero to carry out the atrocities they have been carrying. Okay. Because today, Many of them have come to realize that the fight uh, cannot lead them to realize their dreams, their target. Okay. And uh, okay. Uh, good evening, Mr. Liu. Why are you not inviting Chris Anu and Saku to come and explain uh, their reasons for these lockdowns? Vincent is writing from uh, Bermenda. Okay, uh, Vincent, I'm sure they got the TV now. Uh, good evening to you, Mr. Liu. And special greetings to Mr. Jarvis. We have been have, having uh, lockdowns uh, declared by who? We don't know the solution to this uh, problem cannot be as a result of lockdown. People are suffering. The common man's life is at risk. Please, someone should answer these questions for me. Who are those insisting on lockdown? May we know them and how it has contributed to the solution of this problem from Ebude Tracy. Writing from uh, Boya, good evening to you, Ebude. Uh, this one says, good evening to you too. Uh, good evening, Mr. Liu. It's our from Bermenda. Someone would just sit in another country drinking his nice tea 
and sending his children in school while we suffer. Let them come down and fight like we, what, has, uh, what was happening in Liberia. The leaders were on the field. Good evening, Mr. Liu. Always happy having Fabrice Lena on board. The government organized the major national dialogue, decentralization, special status commission of bilingualism. Just to name a few, it is uh, because of the pressure mounted by these guys in the bushes. We all hope for a better Cameroon. Ngole Hene is writing from uh, Limbe. Good evening, Mr. Liu and all the panelists. I'm very impressed with your frank debates, which are really educative. There is a saying that no organization, regime, etc., no matter how long, how strong, uh, can win a war against the people. Indefinite ghost towns will normally have disastrous repercussions on the common man. The advocates should think, okay, Ndang Walters is writing from Bermenda. Uh, let Chris Anu and his indefinite lockdown go to hell. Is he here in Ground Zero? Come home and organize the lockdowns while here. The masses have suffered enough. Good evening to Doc uh, Mike, Reverend Ernest, uh, writing. Good evening to you, um, Reverend Ernest. The day goes, the day those observing ghost town and lockdown will come to their senses. They will resist being led by the nose. Shame to the Anglophone community for forwarding as received messages on lockdown. Okay. Um, Mr. Liu, you guys should pray for us because most of the time after this lockdown, military send people back home when town is open. Pray for us against tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Ngwa is writing from Bamenda. Good evening to you, Ngwa. Uh, good evening to you all in the studio. If you people are talking about ghost towns, it's because it is affecting something. But my own question is how can we stop this war and stop wasting my brothers' and sisters' lives? My problem is killing. Blaming can't save any life. Cornelius is writing from Mamfi. Hi, Mr. Leo. Please ask your panelists who is an Anglophone. Hi, Mr. Leo. Please speak the truth. Uh, there is nothing like Anglophone. There is nothing like Anglophone mentality, no Francophone mentality. We have Bamileke mentality, Bamenda mentality, Southwest mentality, Douala mentality. Every Cameroon region has its own mentality. Um, Lyndon, you see, I should ask uh, my panelist, John, who an Anglophone is. Um, that's a topic for another day, please. Good evening to you all in the studio. Honestly, Mr. Liu, no matter what we do or what ever strategy put in place the truth is that the government is not willing to solve the anglophone problem even our brothers who decided to leave the bushes to make peace and were put in the center in boya both Sal institute had to strike today okay um mr liu the martin he has spoken my mind and we the people we have we have no choice it's like we are stuck in between the devil and the deep blue uh, sea now um what do you think that um, those who are calling for lockdowns, they, they have learned from previous experience? Do, do, do they not know that previous uh, ghost towns may not have fetched anything like uh, Fabrice Lena uh, said, but still persisting on it? And what if nothing happens after this? <laughs> um, to say they have learned is, 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 is like um, a comment to pass in the eye of the needle. They, they never learn from anything because if they actually do learn, it, it, it would have taken not four years to learn from this that it doesn't produce a substantial effect especially as far as the crisis is concerned uh, i am not against whoever whether you are fighting for the total restoration you are fighting for federation you are fighting for but i just want to uh, uh, limit my answer within the context of this ghost town that and this lockdown that they are calling uh, you ask a question whether they have learned their lessons and if they have not learned their lesson or if they have learned what we go out, out from here the simple way out of this phenomenon is for the common man to pick up the mantle of leadership. Remember that, um, as I earlier indicated to you before, that when this crisis started, we all had our boys. You go to every Knox and Cranite. When these people were passing through Moya Market, you hear the women who are selling will shout, Oh, our boys, come and take. They were giving things, giving things. And subsequent times, when things started moving, kidnappings came into p in the picture. I started hearing, they started talking about uh, those boys, uh, those boys, those boys. And now you're hearing the boys 
and uh, you are hearing different kind of descriptions and uh, you are seeing the military in places where the military never smile with people and the people has now smiled the military exchanging uh, the mentality the rage people used to have with the military is gradually dying down before in the late uh, 2018 when somebody just sees the military they kind of talk the talk and but now within this context you look at what is happening just because of the fact that goes down remember Leo uh, in in North and Southwest region especially uh, within the cities businessmen and women are, are the are the are the heartbeat and the agriculture these are tropical farming area and when they go and do their cultivation where will they come and sell will they go and sell in their rooms they'll definitely go to the market and if they come to the market to sell remember we used to say there's a saying that Moya market or Moya used to be a bread beating basket in part of Central Africa and when you look at this context that there's a total shutdown how do you expect the common man even if you say look I say you should stock food in his house where will he or she has money have money to actually take the child to the hospital when it arrives. If that child is sick, if there's an emergency, they say, okay, you have to, there, there's an operation, you need a sum of 100,000 francs. Because you were for indefinite lockdown for two weeks, that child would definitely die because the separatists have no hospitals that will take care of this situation. The separatists have no uh, food uh, supply channel that will provide for those who don't have for two weeks. The separatists have no maintenance system that they will send to come and enhance electricity supply within this area. How will those people whom you are saying that they should be for indefinite lockdown receive your, your messages on social media if they don't have electricity? Because a new will not be able to move around to, to repair the, the, the blackout since there is an indefinite lockdown. See, the, the, at, at one point in time, we must understand that independent, if you call yourself an independent state, it means you must have all this in context. You must be able to say that we can provide electricity so people should not go out. Whether there's uh, electricity or not, we can maintain electricity because we are the person who have come for indefinite lockdown. But because you cannot provide this, therefore you are ineligible to cover indefinite lockdown. Because you cannot provide for these medical services, if in case there's an emergency, okay. you are ineligible to yeah, cover really, indefinite lockdown. Really, uh, so, mm -hmm. my context, where do we go from here? We go from here because from Anglophones, North and South West, Ngokutunja, come together. I identify yourself in a political party, get yourself involved in opposition political party, or even start a political party from your own side and push for an agenda that will de that will defund the ruling party in some of these areas, in some of these locations. Because if you look at what we are talking about as delegated decentralization, who are those in the regional councillors? Regional council, how can our interests be protected? None. So at times, mm -hmm. let us say we have Mr. Amungwa, Mr. Amungwa is there to defend the interest. We are going to take a no, short no, break. No, I am there to defend. <laughs> no, from a yeah. partisan <laughs> perspective, because if you look at it, yeah. 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 I just wanted to tell my fellow youths of uh, Southern Cameroon, Northwest and Southwest that. Dear brothers, this is the time for us to mobilize ourselves behind a political party because 2025 is no more far. We don't want to continue doing this party boycottism because it will not help us. It will keep thinking that the international community or the leaders are going to help us. It is not going to help us in any way. If we rally behind an anglophone political party protecting the interests of the minority group of Cameroon, which is the Southern Cameroons, we rally behind that party. We we take our all the parliamentarians into that party, all the mayors into that party, and the regional councillors into that party. I bet you we will do more things. There are many webas in a Cameroon existing, but we cannot go to the CPDM to go and be taking instructions from the head of state. But we want to defend the right of the Anglophones. We cannot defend it in the present dispensation. Okay. Please let us do what is right. For me, just could stop calling, please. Good evening to you all in the studio. I just wish to say that I'm blaming whoever won't help. The government has what it takes uh, to end all this. They have the military and the separatists uh, have amber. Let them go and be fighting on the table and leave our streets for us. Zaxon is writing from Bomenda. Um, good evening to you, Mr. Leo. I'm Emma from uh, Bomenda. I enjoy your program today. You are talking politics those with you are uh, uh, case today okay um mr kum the ghost town is of no use the amber boys are the worst things anglophones should be happy with they use uh, they are working their money there is no independent the separatists are not okay <laughs> okay um <clears throat> this indefinite lockdown to me is doing more harm than good good evening sir the lockdown really st stops some people from doing what they have planned imagine if someone traveled 
from Douala to Bermenda on Thursday to do something and go back by Friday and roads were blocked till today. It's horrible. And what pains me the most is that we don't know more have reasons for the lockdowns. It's horrible someone can even die in the house if sick because vehicles, no, no bikes, are uh, haven't circulating. Bright is writing from Babungo. Uh, good evening to you, uh, Bright. Good evening, Mr. Liu and the dynamic guests in the studio who are reawakening the public on the crucial issues that the population is confronting in our society today. May their voices be heard to pave the way forward. Mr. Ambe Emmanuel writing from Bafut. Good evening to you. Good evening, Mr. Liu. I will, I will say the cause of this fight has just been tilted towards the common man and not the government because if they obey the ghost town they incur the loss and if they don't obey they still are the ones uh, who will cry mr liu ben is writing from uh limbe good evening to you uh good evening mr liu <clears throat> can the government and or on international organization not locate the perpetrators of ghost town out there and bring them to book remember america went to afghanistan to get a suspected terrorist and killed okay uh we are going to take a short uh break we are coming right back to discuss on our second topic for tonight Welcome back. Uh, you're watching Prime Hour uh, on My Media Prime. We are going to be looking at uh, the visit by the Secretary of State of the Va Vatican uh, to Cameroon. We are asking whether there is going to be any hope for a turnaround in the Anglophone crisis. We are discussing this today very briefly, but tomorrow essentially the program is going to uh, be focused on, uh, on that visit uh, to Cameroon. Um, we'll start with you um, once again. Um, do you think that anything good can come out of uh, his visit to Cameroon? Well, as usual, this is not the first uh, foreign official coming from an organization or a state uh, to Cameroon for the Anglophone crisis. We've okay. seen the representative of La Francophonie, representative of Commonwealth, uh, envoys of United Nations and friendly countries to Cameroon. The tendency is that uh, we have uh, a government that is bent on pushing through their agenda. That is my problem with the Yaoundé regime, and they seem not so concerned at all about the plight of the people. Because there is a time that when people cry, you, you, you sit down and say, but let's do this to put the record in history. Because I think that the Yaoundé regime will still have gathered some sort of uh, legitimacy, legacy, and the credibility if they truly accept the solutions that have been proposed by the former uh, peace uh, crusaders that have been coming to Cameroon, or even the ones that are still coming now. What is amazing me <laughs> at most with this government is their, their, their way of, 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 of reaction. You know, when Cardinal Tumi and the group of Catholic bishops said they want to go and see the president of the republic they have proposals and uh, 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 solutions as far as mediating the anglophone crisis is concerned <laughs> till date i think the cardinal has been very explicit in most of his media outings when he said the president of the Rep republic had not uh, given him the opportunity to explain himself he had a, a document that was proposing solutions to the anglophone crisis that he took to the national dialogue and most of the elements were never taken into consideration. So what, what am I saying? I'm trying to say that the government is neglecting domestic solutions, whereas most of the people who are even coming from different countries, they don't understand the crisis like a leader in the country. Because the cardinal was living in the, in the, in the he has worked in the troubled regions, he understands the community because he's a Catholic representative and we know the power they will in terms of representation and in terms of percentage that Catholic Christians occupy in Cameroon. Yet, we begin to wonder, what do the state of Cameroon want? What does it take? Who do they want to come to Cameroon before they want to 
accept that it is time for us to sit on a negotiating ta uh, negotiation table to solve this problem. The, the, the vertical representative will have to do what he has to do and go back, and then the normal trend of things will still continue to happen the way they're happening. I'm not seeing any peculiar characteristic factor or anything showing that uh, something significant will come out of this, uh, Celio, because uh, the, 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 the steps that have been taken for the world by the Catholic Church to me is not the best. Because if you want to, to, to put peace between two people who are querying, try to get to the two people and even if you are not treating them as equal because one is a state and one is non-state you should try as much as people to recognize the other party too because one thing with most of the people that are coming to Cameroon is that once they enter they go to the prime minister of the next thing the presidency the next thing stakeholders and then they take their report back home what about the separatists have you also tried to to send people to discuss with them and get let them articulate their grievances so that you hear from them, you hear what they want, and you hear their own proposed solutions. And that is the problem. Now, there are Cameroonian initiatives which are there to get the version of the separatists and to also get the version of the Cameroon government to propose to these people who are coming to the country in order to take true versions of the two sides in order that they can build true peace. Because you cannot build peace from one side. You cannot reconcile people on one side. You have to reconcile from the... Uh, yeah, but, but what else what else what tells you that they are not speaking to the other side no it because one once you mediatize one side there is always that uh, mutual distrust fear and suspicion that is coming from the other side that mm -hmm. oh this man has already and you we all know in cameroon when a representative enters the presidency receive medals salutation with the president <laughs> we know the, the, what comes behind Probably a, a, a huge amount of money, probably some sort of gold medal, probably the person has won the favor of the is almighty head of state really that we have in Cameroon. Are they really so, are they <laughs> you really, see? Are they really uh, very poor? Is that what you're saying? Um, Mr. Mungwa, uh, do you think that anything uh, may come out of this visit? Yes, of course. Uh, I trust and, uh, the philosophy that uh, every beginning has an end. Okay. The crisis must have uh, gone this far, uh, and I trust that with the uh, presence of uh, the Papa representative, I mean they have got uh, a lot of concrete discussions where we see. Even so, he went ahead and given a handing over a Bible. You should be. Uh, quite demonic to that extent where you turn down the Bible being offered to someone we looked upon as a, a God's representative on earth. We know the history and the relationship, the ties that Cameroon has always had with the Vatican. And uh, if today the representative of the Pope uh, actually had to surface again on our land on the specific mission. This was a pontifical specific, specific mission which uh, uh, which was uh, masterminded in Cameroon. Yeah? I strongly believe that not too long from now this crisis will subside and there is going to be peace and stability that will regain the grounds of Cameroon. Um, More specifically, the northwest and southwest regions. You you feel same, uh, Javis? Well, um, the church is one. The church is holy. The church is apostolic, and the church is universal. And if you look at the Vatican representative, I believe he's coming to re-echo that word again. And when we talk about the church, we are not talking about the building. The church is one. The church is holy. The church is universal, meaning that human beings are one. Human beings are all holy and universal. I mean, you should treat them with that kind of accord and respect. I kind of disagree a bit with um, Fabrice. I'm happy you posed a question about how sure is it that they are not talking with the other side. I remember that we cannot refuse that Cameroon is a state. So you must treat a state as a state. That's diplomacy and it must be respected. And in such a way that you don't give powers or talk to the other side as though you are talking to the common government and you make the same like they are equal states. Now, nothing stops them for, to write letters. And 
they, they, they have all their facts. They have Cardinal Tumi. They have all those who can give them the other side of the story. Now, if they are coming in, they are coming now to ensure the spirituality of this, of, of come and ensure that, hey, look at this from the human touch. Have this from the human touch. Don't have this from the spiritual touch. We've had a, all kind of visit. We've had the Grandmaster. We've had the Commonwealth. We've had the African Union. We've had UN boss. We've had everybody we've had. But we, this is the first time that we are having a high profile representative from Vatican, which is crowning up that, hey, let's look, go back to God. Because all the other visits may not have been of importance. Now, what we are taking home and what I'm seeing as effect is that in the next few months or so, you will see that government will start changing its strategy in terms of the way in which they handle the crisis and in terms of the way in which they treat those who are affected as far as this conflict is concerned. Remember that, Mr. Liu, uh, this is the first time you saw the Secretary General of the President of the Republic in Bermuda to tell you that the head of state recognized the, the, the magnitude of that of, 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 of the, the purpose visit in Bamenda. You saw Ferdinand Gongo and uh, Minister Paul Latanganji, Porta Song, and all the ministers uh, were in Bamenda alongside. To tell you that this, they don't, they did not just go to Bamenda just for, 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 for just prayers. They went, we don't know the meeting they had, Ted Ted meeting they had. Remember that a letter was offered to the President of the Republic, and that letter came from Vatican. The President himself is a bona fide Catholic Christian and someone who believes in the church. But in all of this, what we, 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 we should see as tangible result is that we should see the fact that the, the, the human side of of, 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 of treatment of Cameroonians. If you remember, he talked about the fact that Christian Kanatumi has been neglected from receiving the president bed. He looked at it from when the Vatican came, they quickly accorded that. It's, it's, the Vatican is a state like Cameroon. So it's, you will not expect a president, he is represent the Pope is like a president of the Vatican. So you will not expect a president coming in and he say, no, because you are a church. No, he's treated in two capacity. Remember that even the Bishop of Douala is, uh, is an ambassador. Is, is they address them as his excellencies. All bishops are his excellencies. So in as much as we treat them as from a religious perspective, let's not remove their diplomatic perspective that they play as far as that is concerned because they're ambassadors. So conclusively from your question, I expect a lot to change, not from the uh, of, uh, physical side of it, but from the spiritual side of it. Because remember when the, the preacher will say that, Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Remember your church spread throughout the, to, uh, the world. is Remember us, Lord, us. So when they come like that, they are telling the government that, hey, <laughs> people are dying, remember them, and ensure that peace should reign. Um, I don't know whether Dr. Michael sees things from your yeah, prism, but uh, many persons are thinking that something uh, miraculous may come out from this. Uh, but he raised the issue that we saw the arrival to Cameroon of the Secretary General of the, of the United Nations, uh, Antonio Guterres, who was received at the presidency. Uh, we have had uh, the arrival to Cameroon of the Secretary General of La Francophonie, uh, the Commonwealth, and a host of others. Uh, why do people uh, think that something different may uh, come out of this? Is it the fact that he came, did not end in Yaoundé, and went to, to, to Bermuda? Do he was also on mission there. You see, you know, sometimes uh, certain things don't happen for nothing. Okay. Uh, Cameroon is a predominantly a Catholic nation. Predominantly a Catholic nation. And if I can take your memory lane down with uh, uh, St. Pope John Paul II, he was here in Cameroon, and he was received a lot of pomp and fanfare. The whole nation was awake. After Pope John, uh, St. Pope John Paul II, we had Benedict XVI, who came to Cameroon. I mean, against, he could have gone to other African nations, but the two successive popes have come to Cameroon. It is not for nothing. Now we have uh, 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 Pope Francis, who has not come to Cameroon, but Pope Bia went to him. And just thereafter, we are having the Secretary of State of the Vatican coming to Cameroon. Let me let you know that Cameroon has had a lot of issues with the Vatican concerning a lot of people, priests, sisters, religious, who have been abused, who have been killed. The Vatican is keeping record of that. We cannot undermine that. Now, for those who think that the Vatican has been very, very lackadaisical in treating the Angfun issue, it's a lie. We have had the killings in Gambu that the Vatican wrote. We had the letters. 
We have had the killings of the children in Kumba, the Vatican root and condemn. So for the Pope to dispatch the Secretary General to come to Cameroon. I'm sure uh, during his end of year address, he mentioned Cameroon in his prayer. Exactly, yeah. he mm -hmm. did. For the Pope to dispatch the Secretary General to come to Cameroon is not by mistake. And even though he was coming to give the pallium to the Bishop of Baminda, Archbishop, he could have still done that through the apostolic nuncio who is the Vatican representative in Cameroon. But he decided to send the Secretary General to come. And when he landed to Cameroon, the full knowledge we had was that he was going to Bamina to give the palio. But he was received, it was a state reception that the Prime Minister received it. Meaning that he had a dual mission in Cameroon. Yeah. And the first mission was to talk with the state of Cameroon about the Anglophone issues. And of course, we need to be very, very careful about that. Yeah. It is not for nothing. Now, the church is a moral reformer. The church is a conscientizer of the society mm -hmm. and we cannot undermine that when we look at cameroon if the catholic church for example actually decides to say that we are not part of this nation and that we have stopped helping the state of cameroon in reforming consciences in education in this i mean moral conscientization of the society the cameroon government is going to crumble and of course we have has we have somebody at the head and at the helm of government who is supposed to be a dedicated Catholic and a one-time seminarian of who wanted, who, who, of course, we are supposedly uh, supposed to be a priest. So, and it is not for nothing. A lot of those things they count. And we have to be very, very conscious about those, some of those things. So, for the Secretary General to come to Cameroon, he's coming with a peace plan. And, of course, if he's coming with a peace plan, it means that the Vatican has full information about what is, has happened. Remember that a lot of diplomatic missions have come to Cameroon. But the Catholic Church is one of that uh, denomination that takes its time, does its findings, and comes out with its conclusion. Remember the Ngabu issue. The Catholic Church is celebrated for having had John Ko, the Bishop of Kumbu Diocese, to be in that commission that brought up that objective report of Ngabu. It is not for nothing. And therefore, there is a reason. When uh, uh, the, the, the secretary was in Bermuda, what did he do? He had a working session with traditional civil and religious authority. And I know our own people of the Angvun region, they are people who speak the truth. And I know that he has had another version of the truth when he arrived in Malay and when he was received by the prime minister. And let me tell you, there are people who put things on the balance and strike. And I know that he's going to strike and strike who at me. So actually, he is not coming here, here for a kind of a ping pong game. He is coming actually with a message, mm. and a message of the church, and the message of the church is a very very vigorous message. And just to let you know, uh, uh, Mr. Leo, uh, the Pope Francis is a Jesuit priest. I don't know he being a priest, a, a pope is a priest, and there is a priest in Cameroon who had demonstrated as a Jesuit priest that there is a problem in Cameroon. I'm talking about Farah Lagdo, if yeah. you know about him. Wow. He demonstrated and he was ready to die. Of course, he was arrested. Yes. The news room. Do you think the college, the college of just, uh, Of course, exactly. So we have to be very, yeah. very conscious about what is happening in Cameroon. Okay. Of course, yes. Um, uh, Fabrice Lena, yesterday, while addressing uh, the uh, Christians, Catholic Christians who came out to receive him yesterday, and also or know uh, what was happening to the Archbishop. He asked uh, that uh, those who are holding guns uh, should drop the guns. And many persons have um, taken to the social media with all sorts of insult, uh, trying to uh, demonize the Catholic Church and a host of others. Is that the right approach? Isn't it also uh, better to rather present uh, your case in a different manner than like what you are saying, that he went there, maybe he was given money by the President of the Republic. Is that the best way to present your case? Yeah, Mr. Liu, you know, when people want to mix spirituality, morality, conscience with state affairs, mm -hmm. I would say that you don't yet have the regimental uh, uh, temperament for leadership. Because if Mr. Dia, who is the President of the Republic, had had um, just an iota of some of the elements of non-regimental leadership which 
uh, inculcates aspects and virtues of the church, sacraments of the church, I'm sure he should have taken into consideration appeasement and resolution of the Anglophone crisis long before the coming of the representative of the Vatican State. And the, in that note, I would say that I'm still not uh, very optimistic about his visit <laughs> because the first, first there, there are rules of mediation. There are rules of um, reconciliation. And you see, if people are reacting and start... Uh, targeting or insulting the Catholic Church is simply because the guy the guy made an approach that was inappropriate at the time that he's actually making that declaration. Yeah, but seemingly, because, seemingly, seemingly every other person who yeah, has been to Cameroon receives the same treatment. Eh? Yeah, it, that's because they have, they, that's why I said most of the diplomats coming to Cameroon have not realized something until the negotiation process of the reconciliation of the state of Cameroon and the separatist fighters and sympathizers, sponsors of the separatist fighters, reach at the maturity stage. And you're coming to the media to already make declarations of your intentions of reconciliation. It's window dressing. Mm. That it's window could... dressing because it's window dressing because it, when people are fighting, we we made analysis in the first debate. You discover that most of these people who are fighting are who are either in the bushes or the leaders have lost a lot. And there is a certain extent to which when you lose a lot, when you look at some people, they say somebody have committed suicide or don't need that. What do you think? Because there's a certain point in which you as a leader you lose to a certain extent that going back requires a lot. Why is it that people don't study? Why is it that Ojuku, who was the leader of the Biafran uh, government, did not go to sign the reconciliation with Gowon when, when, when he actually surrendered Biafra. He ran to Cote d'Ivoire and instead sent uh, Philip Effion, who was his representative. Because when he looked at what he did, the sacrifice he had done and the extent to which he had gone, he did not believe that already answering the head of state and conquering the people, he could go back again to, to go and submit to an existing state. Now, in that light, People and diplomats need to understand that some of these people have lost a lot, put their lives in a life, life, and they are also thinking of International Court of Justice. And what uh, uh, they, they are also learning from the lessons of the Chastellos eh, in their Liberia. They are also learning from the things that have happened to other people. So, which is on NATO. People, so which you, people should continue dying. So, no, we, I'm not saying that people should continue dying. Peace building is a process. Mm. There must be a domestic uh, forum li linking and communicating with the international stakeholders. And all this must work in a, in a, in a, in a joint manner in order to arrive at true peace. Mm -hmm. If you are passing through one person, which is the state of Cameroon, and we know the behavior of the state of Cameroon, all the conscience talk, the peace plan, the walking up and down, it will end at one thing. The president of the republic well let me just take this tweet of the president of the republic if those who are called upon to drop their weapons are not heeding to the call of the head of state the the forces of law and order is going to what take its action but look at the leadership of another president in a different country he says that i will call on all the political leader opposition leaders stakeholders for us to discuss the security challenge of our country because Cameroon is facing a security problem. Do you think if President Pobia today gives an invitation to all the elites of Norway and Southwest, the Ayapos, uh, 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 the representatives of the elites of Norway and Southwest, and maybe even opposition leaders, the Camtos uh, and the others, that let us sit and discuss the security challenge of Cameroon? Mm -hmm. If these people will feel, then the population will know that they don't want their good. But I'm sure that if all these representatives are called upon to discuss the security problem of Cameroon, we will come, we will find a solution. The problem is that the state of Cameroon is looking itself as Cameroon is their property, and some other citizens who think that their manner of governance is not the best as enemies of the state. Now, uh, and that needs to be redressed before we move forward. Now, uh, should, should we not already start thinking of shifting positions? Because when you listen to what he's saying, uh, there are persons who are considering what they have lost in uh, the war, which, uh, which may be enormous for some and not too much for, for others. On both sides, the government also, when we talk of e economic sabotage, the government has lost a lot. But should we not look at the interest, like we were saying earlier on, 
the interest of the people should that not supersede what you just raised because what you are raising here may be individual interest there. Yeah? Maybe yes, that, that's it. it is. Yes, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I will start by refreshing uh, all along. My co-panelists have been condemning the regime of beer and uh, to the extent of uh, alleged or mm -hmm. always uncertainty about the bribery of uh, uh, the pontifical visit at the presidency. I doubt to what extent he can justify that. Mm -hmm. I doubt to what extent he can justify that. I you mean, the one who is underlying the word certainty. Well, I said oh, that oh. is the that is the tendency in Cameroon, and tendency means that is what they are fond of doing. Well, so a it, country that it, is capable it, of embezzling. It's a hypothesis. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Thank you. No. A, a country that is capable <laughs> of embezzling no, no, we are, we are is capable five of, of what bribing. We are, we, embezzling we, is we, and bribery we, are one and the same thing. Um, are you, are you, Fabrice? Fabrice, 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 we have five more minutes. Let if, talk, if, yeah. if, if you say uh, that's the tendency of Cameroonians and no one, no, the state that, of Cameroon, not Cameroonians. Uh, well, of course, that still boils down to the fact that uh, they should be talking with some uh, proofs. Uh, about uh, the allegations you are attributing here on the platform. Many ministers are in prison because they embezzled state funds. Well, no, but don't actually, uh, they, they were not paying visits. Let him just talk. Wait, 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 no, we, because I don't want him to distort facts. Let him just no, 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 no. Let him not allege that what I said. Because you know, there's a difference Fabrice, between Fabrice, what I would Fabrice, say and why Fabrice, 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 only God knows the truth. So, <laughs> why, why, why <laughs> do you think what you are saying is the truth? Please, let him talk, please. <laughs> okay, Fabrice, sir. Please. I want to allow him, but don't. Argue me and put Fabrice, a different please, please. thing in my words. <laughs> I'm not arguing you. I'm just trying to lay some captions on the Go on, Mr. your criticism. And uh, <clears throat> from all indications, you have a lot of facts of uh, the state protocol, the international uh, diplomatic uh, uh, guests the presidency have been receiving, uh, giving them envelopes. And uh, I don't want to throw more light on that. But uh, one thing which drew my attention is you just contradicted <clears throat> by making a very good statement here that uh, peace takes a lot of peacemaking takes a lot of process. You know, an ease lies ahead those who are with the crown. If you have come to understand that peace processing takes some time, then uh, it's, it's certain that the government has taken measures even though they might not be applauded but there are continuous measures which the government is still putting in place to make sure peace uh in the head of state's end of yes peace i think he actually emphasized much about uh, peace and stability to regain the 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 the, 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 the uh, uh territorial grounds of cameroon which i think that is the primordial factor to any leader so uh, we should recognize the efforts the government is actually making. No, they are well, not making any efforts. Well, if you think... Why is making the situation difficult for Cameroonians? Well, I, I understand your point uh, because uh, you are standing from uh, the opposite direction and uh, no one from the opposite direction mm -hmm. will, will want, want to, to appreciate... To, no, 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 Fabrice, Fabrice, we don't have time now. Just learn, Mr. Amungwa. No. Yeah, so far, uh, I think to crown uh the the, the uh, debate or the topics so far at this juncture we can assume that the common man on the ground supposed to be privileged because no matter how much we're talking about peace and stability democracy it's attributed to the common man on the ground so in this perspective, we should re-strategize. I trust the government is doing all in its capacity. And uh, so far, we need collective efforts, contributions. You sit on the platform here, you're actually contributing. That's part of democracy. You're speaking freely, repeatedly, and uh, which is information is moving across which i think hierarchies also uh, they don't only take make a negative uh, criticisms from you they equally take positive criticism okay that is also uh, uh jarvis yeah. jarvis um we are not going to talk more on uh, this because tomorrow the the our topic our discussions tomorrow is going to focus on the visit 
uh, to Cameroon of uh, the Secretary of State from the Vatican. But uh, there's need for people to start shifting ground. Huh? Yeah, there's need for people to start uh, shifting ground. And the same strategy which those non-state armed groups are using, if we use that strategy for a political party, assuming that we have three political parties in North and South West region, no, and you, 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 you say, okay, if you don't vote for these political parties, this the same strategy they are using now with these Anglophone crisis. They channel that energy to politics. I'm, I'm sure a lot will change, especially with the councils, with the municipal uh, legislative house, with the various councillors. A lot will change. Imagine how many senators we have in North and South region. If you can have a lot of those councils, you can vote, you, know, you have a number of senators. I think you have some few bipartisan senators from the West region. You can have some few from the East region that can add to your number in the parliament and you take a sustainable uh, uh, bill in the parliament. So we need this energy now to political parties. We need it. So that's what I think and uh, we can move okay. forward for me. Mm. You too, you, you think that uh, we should move away from the guns and channeling our energy through political parties? And if we're talking about political parties, then I will say that I had a ship in Paragram. Okay. And my ship was that if I have to reconsider joining a political party, I'm a civil society, then I should be able to give a red card plus to all political parties who claim to be acting in North and South West region. Mm -hmm. I really see that people keep on uh, pointing fingers at CPDM. But uh, CPDM has come to stand the test of time. And I've realized that all these other parties who think that they are criticizing the CPDM, <laughs> they have become a disgrace. <laughs> and of course, a total disgrace. And I think that even all those in the know and Sabah, even the boys in the bushes, will not want to catch or hear any name of any other political <laughs> party in the world because they are a disappointment. They have not stood for them. If okay. they are standing for them, the boys will allow them to go in for election. Okay. The fact that they actually swept them out and left only the CPDM means that actually there is something we need to go back to a drawing Okay, uh, Mr. Liu, uh, we pray for peace and uh, the mission of the Pope's envoy. Jarvis is right. The Pope commands uh, two personalities. He is Lord Spiritual as head of uh, the Roman Catholic Church, Lord Temporal as head of state of the Vatican. He must uh, have dispatched his secretary of state with both uh, functions. Okay. Uh, Wose is writing from, I don't know where Wose is writing from. Uh, Stephen Mambo, my brother says, uh, Mr. Leo, the so called leaders of the so called Ambazonia, uh, demons with no hearts and soul. Let them go and stop the intermediary yeah. alliance who are already in limbo to play their match. Hello, Mr. Leo. Now, uh, when the people of uh, uh, the Northwest and Southwest will decide crisis will end, many Cameroonians have very little knowledge about international relations and diplomatic language. The Secretary of the Vatican came to Cameroon through permission visa by the government of Cameroon. He goes to see the President of the Republic to reiterate the oneness of Cameroon. He is giving security to move to Bermenda by Cameroon, and he asked the separatists to drop their weapons. What more do you want to know about the side of the Vatican? The UN, the Francophonie Commonwealth, AU, and Vatican tells you Cameroon cannot uh, separate. Uh, Stephen, good evening to you. Mr. Liu, good evening. Ask your panelists if independence is given, is given, is taken. Mr. Liu, federalists have to shut up because uh, went for the national dialogue and they came out empty status. Mr. Liu, it's better to lose your pride to save lives than to hold on to your pride and waste our lives. Okay, I don't know who is saving lives and who is wasting lives now. Okay. Um, good evening, Mr. Liu and the guest uh, in the studio. I feel that the Vatican representative's presence can have a positive impact because he preached and emphasized on the necessity for peace and dialogue, which are very vital towards the solution of our problems. Mr. Ambe Emmanuel is uh, writing from Barfoot. Uh, good evening to you. Uh, I don't see anything happening. I understand Vatican is a state and has its representatives in Cameroon, in the form of the church, which it must protect. The government and uh, Ambazonian leaders should put an end to this crisis. Okay, we are going to end at this uh, juncture for today. Thank you, Mr. Amunga, for coming. Thank you very much uh, for your invitation, Mr. Kuhn. Yeah. Uh, it's been quite an interesting topic, and I look forward to being back okay. in the studio. Mm. 
Yeah, for further extend okay. extend our greetings to the mayor of Tuba and uh, the population of uh, Mezam Five. Thank you for coming. Uh, yeah, I yeah, hope the mayor is getting you and watching life. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you very much, Leo. Um, I want to uh, just thank all the people of uh, Norway and Southwest who are putting their energy so that we could build the momentum for a better future by joining. Uh, the Popular Action Party, which is defending the rights of the Anglophones. And uh, I think that if somebody say a party from the Norway and South have not been doing enough, uh, as a citizen who is educated, uh, you can always go and get your own political party and stand as the leader and face the challenges <laughs> thank you, in the field thank you, thank you. and also make the people to follow you so that you could be that exemplary leader. Meanwhile, I still call the youth. We could do it better. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for coming. And also thank you to you, uh, Mr. Jang Dennis. Extend our greetings to him. Eh? Yeah. The, the he's, watching, he's watching our the national, national president. president of he's always clue on the TV. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you, too, uh, for coming. Uh, thank you, Mr. Liu. Thanks to all those who took our time to participate. Um, good evening again to President Bia Maurice Kanto, Nijo Fundi, Aya Paul, Abinia, Pinze Koso, our senior vice Ashu, that we have ID card challenge. We need opposition to, to come together and ask the government on ID card okay, issues. Uh, Thank you to Dr. Michael for coming. Thank you both so much, uh, Leo. And just to say that uh, we have come to the moment of truth and that we have been fooled for so long a time by political parties <laughs> and let the people of the North and South region refuse <laughs> be manipulated again by political parties <laughs> and look forward to a Cameroon of unity, love, peace, and tranquility. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Please. Uh, thank you to you, Eli, for the great job you guys are doing with Desmond, with uh, Christian, and uh, Noel, and uh, Betran, and to you, Tabi, Tambe Bryant. Uh, special good evening to you all who took time off to watch at the program. Stay blessed. Bye bye. <laughs>